I wanted to talk also about Sharon Osbourne. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Sharon Osbourne. She and recently got into a spat because she and Piers Morgan, her fellow Brit, um, after the whole Meghan Markle ordeal, she came to his defense and she essentially said, and as a good friend should. Yes. Um, a good racist friend should always come to their racist friend's defense. What's your racist? Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do the bit and you can, you can let me know if she's racist. So, (laughs) you know, Piers went off, um, and then resigned from his job. He stepped was, down. He was really fired. Um, and recently found out he was replaced by the weatherman. Um, so the weatherman who, you know, put him in his place got his job. Oh, so, that was a weatherman? Who yeah. Was, who was rapping to him yeah. when, he, when he walked off the set? Mm-hmm. Black talk, guy. Talk about a come up. I'm so proud of you, sir. Um, so he, he replaced Pierce. Diabolical <laughs> behavior. <laughs> I love English people. Have you ever come across an English Absolutely man with a deep voice? Diabolical behavior. Have you ever come across an English man with a deep voice? I haven't come across an English man. I mean, even on TV. That's something that uh, bothers me. Idris Elba? Oh, yeah. It just has an amazing voice. So she got into a little tiff with either her name is Cheryl or Sherry. I can't remember. Um, one of the long running black um, co-host of the show and poor Miss Underwood. Cause I can't remember if her name is Sherry or Cheryl. She essentially got berated by Sharon. Sharon, like, I can't remember what question one of the producers had Cheryl ask, but it, it sent Sharon over the edge and she went in and she was i i guess it got to the point where cheryl might have started to get emotional and sharon pretty much told her that her feelings are not valid she said she didn't have the right to get to start crying if anyone had the right to start crying it was herself being sharon um because of the matter and poor cheryl just she essentially had to sit there and take it because if she had responded to sharon with the same energy sharon was given her this conversation would be different. The public would be looking at it as Cheryl is being the, this angry black woman who is attacking Sharon. Sharon is taking advantage of her tears and she's in a place where she feels like she needs to defend herself. So recently after taking, I think a two or three week hiatus, CBS was like, all right, we're just going to sever ties. So they're spewing it that Sharon resigned, that she stepped down. Uh, we all know she got fired. They're paying out her contract. She's still getting like five to ten million dollars. So she's still like she's she's still on the come up. Like people need to start writing like racist clause into contracts. So like if you're getting kicked like fired for racism, like we don't have to pay you out your contract. Um, like null and void. So I just I believe that's called a morals clause. So CBS has no morals because they, they don't, they, they're not, but Sharon is known for being mean. And even her daughter has said some obnoxious things. Like I think back when Trump was, um, was president or was running for president and they were talking about, you know, immigration and Wrong. deporting people and all of this stuff. Um, she had co-hosted the view, I think. Um, interesting that she went on, you know, the original show talk show. Um, and she said, it's some, not the original talk she show. had said something along the lines of if we deport all of you know, oh, yeah, the yeah. Mexicans, um, generalizing people, um, she said, who are going to clean the hotel bathroom, something along the lines of that. So it just shows like, so, I want to. I want to. I want to jump in. Okay. Um, you know, we watch The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. The, that was a big one. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a big one. Please edit that uh, out. I'll, I'll try. Uh, <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Jessica just did like the the I'm so, it's allergy the largest season. snot I've ever heard Ew. in my life. Edit that out too. What you just and said. it was right. You were right over the mic too. I might leave it in. I might give Don't y'all a treat. It like that. It'd be a treat Don't for y'all. Do it like that. Um. Uh, tell me the the the, Ni- the Nigerian dude's name who co who hosted after the rose after the oh um, Emmanuel Acho. So uh, for those of you who maybe follow who don't follow the Bachelor, for those of you who just don't care, I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, there was a series of things that played out over the course of this recent Bachelor season where uh, we had our first Black Bachelor, and the woman he ended up picking uh, was uh, it's I had some old photos surface of her at antebellum parties back in. You know, it was like three years 17. ago, or 2018, 2017 or whatever. Um, and then there's some other things that came out, social media history, like liking some uh, questionable, questionable posts. 
So, uh, and Chris Harrison, the host of The Bachelor, went on um, extra with Rachel Lindsay, who was a former first black bachelorette, and they had a they had a very intense conversation. Chris ended up getting in a bunch of hot water and said he was going to step away to get some some training or education to be more racially sensitive. So I say that to say, uh, Emmanuel. H.O. H.O. Echo. Acho. Acho. Dude, uncomfortable conversations with a black dude on YouTube. Pretty good. Go check it out on YouTube. Um, he ended up hosting after the final rose. So he was talking to Rachel, the woman who was... Uh, who had been chosen by Matt, but then he broke up with her when all the stuff came out. Also known as Antebellum Annie. Antebellum Annie, as Jessica calls her. He told her, um, there are, there are, we're, we're in a time where everybody wants to call everything racist, right? Like, oh, you said something about a black person, you're automatically racist. Or, oh, you played into a stereotype about black people. Oh, you're automatically racist. And he said, there are things that are racially insensitive, and racially, I think racially ignorant may have been a term he used. And then there is actual racism. I think what may, may be happening here is that she's racially ignorant or racially insensitive. I don't know that she's necessarily racist. She's racist. Um, <laughs> and from what I've seen, like a lot of the articles that I've read, because I did a little bit of research because I figured we were going to be talking about this. She says some things that are foul, um, but I don't know that they would equate to like, like, to like actual racism. Um, she may just be one of those just toxic people. Like so I who, think she's racist. Um, I, <laughs> okay. I disagree and nullify everything you said. One, you have, to, um, you have to nullify. You can just disagree. Why you got to nullify? I mean, you look. I didn't cancel and nullify. Goodness, get gracious. real spiritual on you. Tough crowd. Uh, I think she, I think she is racist, but I think there. I the thing about racism is I think there are there are level you know how people there are levels to this there are levels to racism like you got like racism is almost like salsa you got you know your basic salsa it's just tomatoes like it's pico there's just tomatoes onions salt and pepper and then you've got like mild so they might put like the jalapeno but they take the seeds and the membrane out then you got medium where they they leave the seeds and then you got like hot where they put the seeds the membrane they might throw in a habanero pepper like it's it's, it's increasing and i think racism has that same effect where you you are racially biased and maybe you just disagree with his ideologies you i mean yeah but does that make him but i think the delivery <laughs> can make a difference too like you, you gotta, can, but it's it's important to not. It's okay. It, it's important. It's important to distinguish the tone from the message, right? True. Like just because somebody somebody delivers something in a way that is unfavorable to you, so it doesn't I need necessarily you to remember this the next time you bother me or you say something to me and I respond. No, why does it gotta manner, come back to us? We're not talking about manner. us. No, because you're not gonna We're sit not here about and drop this about peers. philosophical no, you, it's the not tune even, and it's the not message. Even, it's so not even when I it's, be like it's the it's the message, not the messenger, right? Like people who So remember people who you disagree with can say things that have merit. You just have to actually listen to the message and not not the person who's speaking it and not the way in which it's being said. You have to actually just listen to what they're saying. Like I are mean, we are like I last do. week. Like so like when, last week, when, last week I played the Candace Owens clip when she was going off about Lil Nas X. I don't personally, I don't personally, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of what she says and I don't care for her delivery, but a lot of what she says, as you agreed, had some, merit. Well, I won't yeah. say a lot, but some of what she said had some merit. It didn't so even thinking, thinking, it's like it's in, it's important to listen to what people are actually saying I mean, and I get not what focusing on who they are, what party affiliation they have, what network they're on, whether they're whether they're yelling or whether they're they're calm and just listen to the message. Now, this is not a, a defense of Piers Morgan. This is not a defense. Like a defense. This is not a defense of, of Sharon are you Osbourne. Are racist? Because you are defending these ra- <laughs> these races. Yeah. Going through some going past. Yeah. Nothing but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now.